Sometimes I'll do this, by the way, you guys, we're going to talk about this tool here in a second. Sometimes when I have something very dark like this or whatever, uh, I might try and level it out so I can see. And I made a copy of the layer, if you notice, so I can wreck this layer. See there? Now I can see where the edges are. Does that make sense? And if I wanted to take out, like, let's say this, this cowl thing or select it. I'm going to come in here and look, there's a little bit of a curve right there. So I'm going to come out here in front and pull. Come out here. I'm going to come. Okay. So now I want to adjust this. Um, I'm still in the pen tool because I don't want to exit the pen tool. And now I'm going to go to my command. And now it gives me the white arrow tool, which means I can adjust this. Oops. Now I'm going to keep going. Oops. I've got to grab it again. Another curve. So I'm always trying to get out in front of these curves. And then I'm going to grab my, now I'm going to grab the option key, which gives me just a corner. I just want to adjust that a little bit. Then I'm just going to keep going. And I'm always, when there's a curve like this, I'm going, there's the curve. I'm going to get out to here about where, it, or I could even probably go all the way to here and pull it. Yeah. And then if I go here, it's going to blow out like that. And I'm going to go back to command. Oops. Now it's adjusting everything. So I'm going to try it with my corner tool a little bit. So the only two things I'm using is my pin, or three things, is my pin tool, and then my uh, either command for the white arrow tool to adjust or option to switch it to a corner point. It's going up here somewhere. So let's say that's my selection. Oops, that's my selection. And now I'm going to go to paths. Command, click the little thumbnail, and there it is. Now, I'm going to go, because I'm going to save this, because I, I can use this for what I'm going to do in a minute. I'm going to go inverse, because I actually want the outside, and then I'm going to go select, save selection. Okay. Now you have to have your selection all refined before you save it, right? Because it saves it. Uh, yeah, if you're going to save it, there's no point in saving it if it's a, if it's a rough selection, you're right? Uh, now, I might save a fairly, like on this thing, it just depends on what I'm going to do. Sometimes I do do a fairly rough selection because what I'm going to do doesn't require a lot of precise stuff. I might be doing something with lighting or something like that. And to me, it's like, well, that's not as big a deal, okay? And then I'm going to save this. Oh, okay. So let's say So the two things really to me with, um, now I can deselect it because I have it. Um, with uh, the pin tool is you got to remember you're in the pin tool and from, and the only two things you really got to think about is like, if I want to adjust something, not a corner, uh, I just want to adjust the whole thing with the, with the handles. That's my command. That's going to give me the white arrow tool. If I want to do a corner point, I go option and that's it. Okay. That's why sometimes it's hard for me to go, where does this live at? Basically where it lives is up here, all these tools right here, but I don't want to keep coming up here. If I'm in the pin tool and going, okay, I'm doing this. And now I want to come up here and get a corner point. And, you know, I don't want to do that. It's just, it's too time consuming. So I want to get used to using my, um, by the way, if you want to get rid of this, you can just drag it to the, um, or you can just select it and throw it in the trash. Um, I don't want this to get, um, I just want to stay in that pen tool. I don't want to keep going back to the toolbar and switching tools and doing all I want to do that in the moment, and it's just these two fingers, uh, command, option. And then the only other thing you really need to think about is sort of starting to learn to go, there's a curve here, so I'm gonna start here, and then it, I probably can make the whole curve in one fell swoop and then pull your, your handles. So if I take, there's three little tools here I want you guys to look at. They're under image, 
okay? And they're under adjustments, okay? The first one is levels, which is command L, easy to remember, okay? And it gives me this window, okay? And what this is basically is light and dark, but I can kind of dial it in based on, if you look over here, let's pull this over here more. If you look over here, I've got dark, medium, and light. So that's your dark, mid-tone, and light, okay? So if I want to affect, let's say, the mid-tones, I come in here, and I can just dial this in lightness or darkness. Does that make sense? I mean, it's fairly straightforward, okay? Now, the other one here is also under image, adjustment, hue saturation, which is command U, okay? And it's going to give me this window. These are going to become very important very quickly. And it gives me these three options. This is the color spectrum, this top one. So I can roll through here and change the color spectrum, okay? Now, what I do a lot, especially when I'm doing digital painting and stuff, I, I might have, I might have, I don't know, an overlay or something. And I might go, I'm just going to go through, I do this all the time. And then I run through the spectrum and go, oh, green actually looks cooler. And then I go, and then people go, well, that's a screaming green. It's like, it just tells me I like green. Now I'm going to adjust the green, right? Does that make sense? I'm going to dial it in, right? Because a lot of times, again, this comes into like sort of working a little bit traditionally in the thinking anyway, um, of having the computer become a collaborator. And, you know, if I roll through that spectrum, I might find a color I like a lot better that I didn't think of. Does that make sense? Okay. And then the last one. Okay. So here's saturation. Literally, that's all it does. I can totally desaturate it to black and white or just crazy saturate it all the way to there. Okay. Then the other one is light or dark. So just makes the whole image lighter, or darker. I don't use that very much. If I'm going to adjust the light and darkness, I'm probably going to use levels. Okay. Now, then the other one is right here under the same place, brightness contrast. Gives me this window. Here's my contrast. So it does exactly what it says. It either gives it more contrast or doesn't. And then brightness again. This is brightness. I use that once in a while. I usually use contrast here and there. Does that make sense? So three simple tools now that we can start adjusting color, intensity of color, or lightness and darkness of the image. Yeah? So that's what I used just now when I was starting to do that pin tool thing we were talking about, where I made that layer lighter. Does everybody understand why I did that? Because I can't see it. It's so dark, I can't see the edges. So I do that all the time. I might lighten up the layer. I make a copy of it, and I lighten up the layer so I can make the selection, and then I just usually eliminate that layer, okay? Because once I make the uh, selection, the layer doesn't matter anymore. Selection's a selection, okay? But you're going to get photos or, you know, or whatever you're doing where you need to make a selection and you can't see it, you know? So you might want to go in there with your levels and that layer, because it's just a throwaway layer, I just blow it out. I don't care if it looks like crap. I just want to see what I need to see. Does that make sense? Okay. Now. Oh, here's another tool that I do want to talk about real quick. Okay, so you guys remember we've done, let's let's take, a, let's try it with this image. I don't know if it'll work. <coughs> oh, let's do it with this. Let me see if I can find this real quick. Okay, so when we're talking about these um, foreground background swatches, we've been going, okay, I got a shape edit, fill, and foreground color, and it fills it, correct? Or edit, fill, background color. Okay, does that make sense? We know that already, right? So now we're gonna try a little bit of a different thing that's under the same area. And we'll get into the more precise version of this later on, but this, this actually works quite a bit pretty well. So I'm gonna go, let's just try it with my polygon lasso tool. Let's take the dog. And I'm gonna fill this. Edit, fill, 
but I'm going to go content aware. Boom. And it took the dog out. Okay. Now you can see it's got a little bit of stuff going on here, but that's super easy to fix. Okay. I can come in and smudge that a little. I can come in and take my paintbrush or my, even my um, clone stamp, maybe and just kind of go paint that out a little bit. So on and so forth, right? So what content aware means, and you're going to start seeing it in different tools we're going to use, is it's aware of what's around it, okay? And so it's going, okay, based on what I'm seeing around it, I'm going to eliminate, you know, I, I know, I think you want to eliminate, it's going to fill it in with the stuff around it and paint that stuff back in. Does that make sense? Now, it's not always going to be 100% accurate, okay? But you can see it's pretty damn good. Okay, and sometimes it's right on. Okay, so let's try it. Let me see if I can find. So that was under edit, fill, and then content aware? Yeah. Okay. So instead of picking your background color, or your foreground color, you're just picking content aware. Mm, okay. okay. And then I'll show you, we, we can get into that tool and we can fine tune it a lot more. Okay, but I don't want to get down into that yet. Okay, I'm trying to give you a set of tools that we can start that simple uh, photo correction. I'm going to give you a really lousy photo on Monday and we're going to correct it. Okay. Probably take you a day or two. And then we're going to do our poster thing. And the poster thing is more about using all these tools to create that. Okay. And I'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, and again, I'll put this up on, when I put it up under announcements, I'll put, you know, it lives here. Okay. So hopefully those two things, I like having a quick go-to, like, where's that tool? I don't have to go through the whole video and go, what is, you know. And then let's try it with this, hang on. I'm, by the way, I'm not going here to content aware fill or content aware scale yet, okay? Because that's where you can get into it and dial this in a little more. Right now, I just want to stay with fill Content aware. Not too bad. That's not a bad starting point. I just come back in here now and probably maybe take this nice big soft brush. Oops. Excuse me, Mike. Yeah. So you have the stamp tool. You're using the stamp tool, but you said soft brush. That's just a setting that you adjusted to, correct? Yeah, up here under your brushes. Okay. So a lot of your tools are going to behave like brushes. Okay. Which is a good thing. Okay. I still got all this fuzziness here I'd have to get rid of. Thank you. So I could go up here and I go hardness or softness, size. Okay. Again, size i can just use my brackets right or i can go shift and use my brackets and that'll make it harder or softer okay so i would come in here and i'd paint a little of that back in but you can see down here man it really did a great job down here does that make sense um i was just gonna oh and another thing by the way the reason i'm always saying soft brush and if i go and i turn this into a hard brush and let's say that I put the trans or the opacity up to a hundred, it gets that ridiculous hard edge. It's never going to work. Okay. What I'm trying to do is make this flow into the, uh, the actual environment. It might be a little of that. I might come in and just do a little paint over it, whatever, you know, very simple stuff. Okay. But this gets me really into a pretty good spot. Um, and then we'll lower the opacity again. Because you're going to find out with a lot of tools, it can also be with paint tools and things like that. Oops. Um, that starting off a little less opaque is going to help you out a little bit. Oops, screwed up. But anyway, I'd paint back in there and that works pretty good, right? That would take me a lot longer if I was going to do it with a pen tool or something like that. Because number one, I'm going to be cutting her out and I'm going to have an empty space there that I have to start painting everything back into. Um, you know, and there's some other solutions that we'll find out later. Does that all make sense? 
Pretty simple tool, right? You just got to think of it as it's under fill. I don't want to go into the fine tuning yet. Okay. And then also, by the way, I like to set this back to my foreground color. That's fine. Oops. Okay. So that's all under image. Brightness contrast or uh, yeah, brightness contrast levels. Levels are going to be really important and command U, hue saturation, those three, okay? And if you notice the way we're looking at them right now, they're just sliders and things. So they're very simple. Does that make sense? Okay. Now let's look at this thing. I'm gonna take these two, by the way, I wanna, I wanna show you guys something just so you know, it's not gonna make sense yet, but it will in a little bit. If I take something off my desktop and I drag it into Photoshop. This one's fine, okay? I think it's because I didn't have an open um, file, but what it'll normally do if I drag it, like I go, oh, I wanna drag this in here and edit it. Let's take another image. What it does usually is, if you look right there in the window, you see that little icon right there? We don't want that for now. Okay, we're going to talk about that later. So what I have to do is over on this bar, I have to right click it and go rasterize layer. And that just turns it back into a normal pixel layer. Okay, the other thing's a smart object. We'll talk about that later. Um, so if you ever pull it in there, because if you pull it in off the desktop, all of a sudden there'll be a bunch of things you can't do. And you'll be like, why can't I do this? Because you have to right click it. You can also go, it should be up here to under layer. Um, rasterize and then when it's not let's go back so let's go uh layer because we're talking about the layer rasterize smart object and it's the same thing or you can just right click it okay and by the way control and clicking anything uh is like a right click on a mouse does that make sense so if you don't have a right click mouse that's how you do it so it's always control right or in uh windows i guess it's alt Okay, so that just ex kind of explains, by the way, this is a badass illustration right here. Yeah. So how I'm gonna do this, usually if I just wanna eliminate that problem is I will go uh, to there. So I gave you guys two files. Uh, what does it mean by smart image or smart? We're gonna, um, we're gonna talk about that later. Okay. Basically what it is, is it can apply a lot of things to something without you having to do each one individually, more okay. or less. Okay. You'll see, we're going to do a project uh, uh, exercise with it and not, not that long. Okay. But that project is kind of, you know, everything I'm going to add to it, it's not complicated, but the end result would look complicated if I showed you now. It won't look complicated in two weeks. Okay. Okay, so how I'm gonna do this, because I don't want that smart object problem. Now see how everything locks into this um, tab, into the frame. I'm gonna take this one, because I wanna drag it into the other one. I'm just gonna pull it out, grab my move tool and just drag it over here. Then I eliminate that problem. Casey, that makes sense? Yeah, okay. Then I don't have to, I don't have that stupid smart object problem. And then I'm gonna take this and make it a little bigger. So I wanna make sure it covers my person. And then I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna go up to my layers and reduce the opacity so I can see how it's falling. Yeah, right there. So let's put it like there. And I'm gonna go back up and put this back to 100%. Now, I want this under this, right? But I can't do that, why? It's locked. Right, it's a lock layer. So let's layer. unlock it. Just click the little um, uh, lock. You can rename it if you want, or you can just rename it and it'll do the same thing. And now I'm gonna pull this underneath here. All that makes sense so far, correct? Okay, so again, let's take a nice big soft brush. Let's go to our brushes. Go up here, I already have a soft brush. I'm gonna want it fairly big. And I'm gonna drop the opacity down again, right here. Okay. Now in this case, I don't want to drop my opacity down 
on the layer because the whole layer will be affected, okay? I want it just to affect my brush, okay? So I'm knocking the opacity down in my brush tools in my control bar, okay? So I'm gonna go down to, I don't know, I'll go down pretty far. And then I'm gonna go um, here and right here, it says effects and then right here, that's a layer mask, okay? And I'm gonna go click and you can see right there, that's my mask, okay? And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna default my uh, swatches right here. That's where they go white, black, to black and white right there. And then I'm gonna go, so now I'm, I'm not erasing, I'm painting, okay? So I'm gonna come in here with my low opacity brush and I can start to reveal those forms underneath her. You see this constantly in movie posters, okay? Now, here's the beauty of it. Let's say I go out here and I go, ah, oh, crap, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna go right here and you can do it with X or you can do it right here. So I'm gonna do it with X, you can flip it. Now I've got white and now I can go in and paint this stuff back in. So again, we're doing non-destructive editing, okay? And the beauty of this is that when you get into complex images, you're, you might wanna come in here and go and really tweak this. Does that make sense? So what you're doing, if you look over in the mask, look what it did, you can see it. See how it painted that out? It's like putting, this is the way I always look at it. It's like putting a, a piece of paper over this and like cutting a stencil essentially, right? Except that I can paint the stencil back in. That's it, right? So I just, that's the way I think of it, okay? So um, black, so black you paint away and white you paint back in? Black reveals, white conceals. Okay, thanks. Okay, so you have to get it out of your head. At least I did. Um, this isn't... Um, erasing okay mm -hmm. it's painting really okay. okay but i can go back in and really get fine-tuny with it and i can adjust my uh opacity up here you know and whatever i want to do now so if you look over here again at the mask if i go 100 percent, let's say see the mask see that changed now it's back to 100%. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it does. Really handy tool. Now, another thing, you guys, let's use a crappy selection. So I just filled it with white based on a selection, and it just chopped out the whole selection, right? You mean you filled it with black? Uh, yeah, I always get that backwards. Is it? Yes, I think you're right. Uh, you have to play with it a little bit. I always, every time I do this, I have to go back to like, it's black reveals. And I just found out a way to think of it this morning, actually, because black to me, I would think of it as painting opaquely, not revealing. Does that make sense? But then I started thinking about it in terms, because I need to know these, or at least for my brain, uh, then I went, oh no, white makes sense because white, when you paint traditionally, is your thickest paint. It's your most opaque paint. And darks are actually your most transparent paint. When you're talking about oil, acrylic, watercolor, or not watercolor, um, you know, everything except watercolor, right? Does that make sense? So that's just how now I think of it. And I go, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense, you know? Now, let's look at something else here. And I'm going to make a shape here on another layer. Now I'm going to use a really rat, uh, ratty brush here. You got to find a good one. That's pretty good. I'm doing this on a different layer. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yes. So let's say we go out to here. I'm doing a magazine spread for hiking magazine. Okay, so I'm going to take this image right here, and I'm going to drag this layer underneath, okay? Then I'm going to hold Option, and see it change right there when I go in between the layers? 
-hmm. and then I'm going to click. Oops. And it gives me this nice painted edge because it's using that brushwork I just did and creating a mask. Okay. Now the only trick with this is my brain goes, well, shouldn't the mask be on top? Because I can illustrate it, it would be on top, right? It doesn't. It has to be underneath it. For what, and, and who cares? It just does. Does that make sense? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but it's a really nice effect. Yeah. And then, you know, if I come in here and I go, now look, I can move it around inside there too and readjust it. Okay. Now, if I want them to move together, I got to select both of them. You know, and then if I had my layout, So all you did was put your cursor in between those two layers with, with option? Holding, holding option. option. Okay. So when I'm holding option, when I go between those two layers right there, it will change the little mm -hmm. clippy mask icon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now it's probably up here too somewhere. I'd have to find it. So there's probably a command for it up here. It might be under image, but I love that technique. I think it's a really cool technique. Okay. You know, Pastor, and then, can you just do it one more time? Sure. Um, just like for me to, I mean, I can see you do it, but I'm trying to get my mind around it. Yeah, so, I get it. Um, you, you put down the, the, the black smudge or the dark green smudge, and that's affecting the mask, right? That's well, that, saying, that is forget the, everything else. That is the mask. That is the mask. Oh, okay. Okay. So what I'm creating there. So that's what. There. Mm -hmm. This shape right here, that's my mask. Oh, okay. So okay. if I came in here, let's try something else. If I came in here and went, uh, I'm creating a shape in uh, Illustrator real quick. Okay, there's a shape I created in Illustrator. So just so we can see a different shape. I don't think it cares about the color because it's just looking at the shape. I'm gonna put it under, the, under my image that I wanna clip, hold option and boom. Okay, that's clear. I, I get it now. Right. The reason yeah. I just love doing torn edges and things like that, right? So I was getting a little thrown off. So it doesn't color it. It just makes the mask shape. And yes. then you can affect the opacity. And so the opacity too, or was that, are those two mm -hmm. different concepts? I don't know if you could do, I don't know. I never tried that here. Let's see. Yes. Okay. Basically, it's creating a frame. Yeah. Okay. It's creating a hole in the image and it's letting you see. It's creating a stencil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's you know, okay. But no, it, that's what screws me up is like the, the stencil is actually underneath the image, though, for some reason, right? Um, but to me, essentially, you're creating, it's just like taking a piece of paper, cutting a frame out of it, and putting it over your um, image. Does that make sense? Okay. Now I get it. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, you guys, when these things don't make sense, I want you to ask me, okay? Don't think it's a stupid question because it is not, okay? Because I think this stuff's confusing, okay? Just based on my experience with it. With, again, most people now are digital natives. It's they You tend to get this stuff a little faster. And the only reason I'm going to do this is because, again, I think it's very important to talk about these tools in the context of actually using them. Does that make sense? Okay. And I have an example in here for, with that clippy mask thing on something. I'll find it and try and show it to you on Monday. Um, okay, so let's go here. So let's look at posters. Okay. Let's just open them. So I went and just grabbed a bunch of movie posters. Okay. So this is sort of what I was talking about. You tend to get these sort of, you know, more or less they're collages. Does that make sense? So they're getting studio assets. I was just reading a rant by this guy, which I thought was interesting because it's exactly what we remember. I was talking about the, the lighting in an environment yesterday. This guy's talking about how movie posters suck now, which is kind of true, but, um, 
and he's you know it's, i don't know who this guy is but and he's going uh hey here's a what looks to be a more hand painted it's digital but uh, a painted uh, illustration i'd argue i don't think it's great he thinks it's really great but i don't but um and he's saying one of the biggest complaints about Photoshop posters is that they're slapped together from multiple images from various sources. We talked about that yesterday. Okay, those are assets. And the studio probably these days is going, here's a headshot of Robert Downey Jr. Here's Robert Downey Jr. running. Here's Robert Downey Jr. doing the power thing. Here's, you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, okay, this always results in a poster featuring faces lit from a dozen different light sources. Does that make sense? Okay, now I'd argue like some of these, I don't know that it bothers me as much in something like, actually the light source is coming, no, over here, it's up there. There's a lot of ways to justify this. This is a totally fantastic environment. So there could be a light up here. It's lighting her up here. There could be multiple light sources. There is multiple light sources. There's all sorts of magical stuff going on. So there's a lot of ways I could play with that. Like with her, I might have gone much more with this orangey color on here. So I'd say that's the light source hitting her over there. Does that make sense? Right. And then over here, like they did here, they put a little bit of the cool in here. So I might just pull the light sources because you do have multiple light sources here. Okay. Um, but anyway, that's kind of what we were talking about where you're starting to have to deal with what they're giving you. Okay. Okay. So this one, if you look at it really nice, selections I always look at them and go where can I see I always like to look at them and go where can I see the mark of the hand they're really good at this you know this guy feels a little cut out to me this light right there probably wasn't there it's a nice way to to break off that edge without having to go in and like tweak the hell out of it okay so some of this stuff is probably also they got a lot of nice rim lighting on here, right here. Um, a lot of times you can use that to sort of obscure an edge a little bit. So you're not, you know, if it's hair or something like that. Does that make sense? Okay. Overall, I don't know. I think it's a pretty boring poster, but whatever. Okay. So let's look at this one. Now, wait, let's look at this. Is a really good example of crappy Photoshop. Okay. So if you look at these two people, they look totally cut out. Okay, look at his hair. I mean, it's ridiculous. Okay, and then this stuff, look at the way this abruptly ends right here. That fa Now maybe this is a fan art poster, I don't know. By the way, there was a poster for Harley Quinn, that movie, that was the name of it, that had one of the worst movie posters I've ever seen in my life. And a student showed it to me in class. I go, that's not, that's a fan art movie poster. And he goes, no, it's not. And I go, it, it's gotta be. I go, nobody could do a poster that bad and be professional. And it was the actual movie poster. I don't know if you guys saw that, but it was bad. Okay, I'll pull it up. Okay, so anyway, look. Look how hard edge all these edges are. Look how abruptly she ends. You've got this black and white concept back here, and then it goes color. That's not a bad idea. She looks very cut out. This whole thing just looks totally cut and pasted. Does that make sense? Yeah? Casey? Yes. All right. So let's look at another thing here. Now here, this one I don't think is very interesting. You know, here they're adding it. Now here I'd argue probably, this is probably, a. Uh, I never can find a bigger image of this for some reason. If you look, the background here, you went to a total monochromatic blue, right? Um, and then Batman is a monochromatic blue. Now I might have, and I don't know what his design process was here, but one of the processes I might do is just go, cool, I can take, and, and by the way, these things marry together. It's a good design and everything, but it's like, A, he's using that blue to really pop all that hot warmth, right? You're going to see that over and over in this. You're going to see it over and over again in concept art. Warm, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool. They do it constantly in movie poster design, illustration, and especially concept design. Um, so anyway, that serves two purposes, at least in my mind. It's really blowing that warm out of there, which is really nice. But it's also, if I got that image of Batman and then I have this image of the building in the back, I automatically can put those two things into the same environment without a lot of work. Does that make sense? 
And it's a cool design. So it solves two problems. Okay. Now, I don't know if he had that problem with it. I don't know if that was a, I doubt if that was a direct still from the movie. And then he just obscured up the bottom with some smoke, right? Does that make sense? Here is the one we talked about. The two stars, the, the, and then the, the bottom horizon-y thing. In this case, it's a, um, an, a, a dynamic angle of the ship. Does that make sense? You see this, you see that constantly, okay? Let's see if I have any other good ones in here. And then this one here sort of reminds me of the same idea. This one, even this one a little bit. This one, they threw the whole thing into, again, that monochromatic blue makes total sense. It's underwater, but it also solves a lot of issues. Does that make sense? Like, I don't even know, you know, this, who knows what lighting that was in, okay? And then let's see, I think, it, and then this one is the hero headshot. Here it is again. This is the Titanic one we just saw, except they took these guys out, right? They're slightly monochromatic. And then here's the horizon down at the bottom, right? So if this is a Western, you're going to have Clint Eastwood, you're going to have, Morgan Freeman, you're going to have the three guys. Clint Eastwood will be the biggest. This guy will be smaller, smaller. By the way, those ratios are all determined. Okay. I used to know a guy did movie posters. He did a lot of big ones. And he goes, if I have Tom Hanks, then everybody has to be X percentage based on their star power of Tom Hanks, big head. Okay. So here's whatever his name is, Chris Hemsworth or whatever. Right. So there's a, there's a hierarchy there. Um, uh, okay, and then, and then, like I said, if you if it's a Clint Eastwood movie, and then down here, the horizon would be all of them riding on horseback with the sunset behind them towards the viewer, right? How many times have you seen that? Okay, if it's Mad Max or it's Fury Road, it's probably going to be all reddish, okay, because it's that hellish environment. It's going to be maybe the same thing, only in the bottom, you're going to have all those crazy vehicles all coming towards you. You see it over and over again. It's formulaic, okay? The reason being is that marketing people now run movie posters okay that's why they became boring all right and you're going to hear a lot of my hatred for marketing people in here um okay so here's a couple different ideas right was this guy drew struzan okay he ruled this world for about 30 years okay <clears throat> these are all hand painted okay no digital no nothing here's a close-up he did some of the biggest movie posters you ever thought of right Great stuff, great design, beautifully painted. He did all the Star Wars, all the famous Star Wars ones, all the famous um, Indiana Jones. Look at this one. Okay, and then look back here. Here's your monochromatic, all that reduced to monochromatic, just a few lit windows, you know, blah, blah, blah. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is who they're all emulating, okay? Although none of them have the talent. Um, and by the way, that's a monumental level of talent, so I'm not knocking anybody. Uh, uh, so then look at this. Okay? It's just photos, okay? Now, I guess it, it accomplishes it. The one thing I will give it is that it's got a lot of brightness to it and the color saturation is kind of fun. But it's just... I mean, the background's a little bit interesting, but it's 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 a collage. Does that make sense? Yeah? Now, you can like it. I'm not saying you shouldn't like it or anything. Let's see if we can make it bigger. But let's look at what we're concerned with here. And I don't care if you do this montage -y thing. It's fine. You know, pretty good selections and everything. You know, again, here's that highlight on the hair which is smart because you have all this lit stuff. Now, here's another thing for me that's kind of a problem. Even though this is a fantastic thing, why would I not take advantage of all this fire and throw some of that light on that side of the face? Because what's that going to do? It's going to pull everything together into the same environment. Because you are telling me these people are all in the same environment, okay? I know it's fantastic and all that. Same thing here. Look, no reflected light whatsoever, okay? Little bit right there. A little bit here. Now, maybe they did that because they wanted her to pop more. So they gave her a little bit of the uh, environmental lighting. Does that make sense? 
So maybe that's the thinking there. No light here, no light here. They're not really reflecting their environment very much. But that's another one, right? Made from various elements. The guy that I knew who used to do these, um, he said he did a custom photo shoot with the actors one time. He goes, I never did that again. And I go, why not? And he goes, they were complete assholes. He goes, they didn't want to be there. They didn't like it. They didn't want to do it. I forgot what movie it was. And I go, so what'd you do from then on? He goes, I just use myself or I hire somebody else and put their faces on it. You know, because that was in the age of Photoshop by then. He did Witches of Eastwick and a bunch of big ones. Here's one. I don't think it's great, but it's an example of what we just did with our um, layer mask tool. Correct? And you see it all the time. Sometimes you'll see it where the head sort of fades out and it turns into bats or birds or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> Here's another one. This one's a little more interesting. You, can you guys see how they're all trying to be Drew Struzan? Okay. I mean, he wrote the book on this. This, you know, this is fine. Yeah, I like this one a little better because at least, you know, it has this sweep here. This dynamic angle is nice. I like this cropping out down here. By the way, here's another version of the horizon on the bottom. Right? Same thing, right? And I'm not saying don't do these things, okay? I'm just saying here's what they are. Here's one that I found that I really, I kind of like this one. The hero head, and then everyone else is, is smaller based on their billing, right? Based on their star power. I think it's totally contractual because I remember my friend telling me that, or my, it was a teacher of mine, actually. Um, he was talking about that and that was like in the nineties, you know what I mean? And he was going, this is how it works, you know? And it's all percentages at that time. And then I was watching an old video on uh, Bob Peak, or no, not Bob Peak, uh, Bo uh, Robert McGinnis, right? And he, again, he was back in the sixties, seventies, whatever, and he was painting them. And he had James Bond with two girls, but the girls, were on the same head level as him. So then they had to they had to come in, and this is before digital, obviously. And the guy called him up because the studio goes, he can't be the same height as those girls. He has to be taller than everybody because he's James Bond, he's the star. And then they called Robert McGinnis and the art director goes, Hey man, you gotta, you gotta make that guy taller. He goes, I can't do that. You know, he goes, What do you want me to do? So anyway, the art director went in, it was probably on the illustration board. He took an exacto knife. He cut out and peeled it off the illustration board, raised him up, and then filled that in. So if you look at it, you don't really notice it, but if you look at it, his torso is way too long. Okay. <laughs> and now you now you don't have that problem. You do it digital, whatever. Okay. Okay. So that's, you know, this is a, this is a good example of a digital poster, right? It's fun. It's exciting. Um, this one I thought was interesting because it's a little more poetic. Okay, and look, there's some texture on here. I'll talk about that in a minute. See the texture? Um, I like the, I really like this red lighting down here. It looks like there's some like, they put a texture over it. You know, and this is an actual shape with a little bit of texture. Really subtle stuff back here. It's just kind of nice. I have no idea what this movie is. Does that make sense? So a little different idea, right? This is what you see mostly. And then, or actually not as good as that, I would argue. Let's see, I got a couple in here. Here's that one. Here's another one. Here's our warm cool again. You got your cool over here, your hot over here, right? Again, you can use this rim light here to soften up those edges. So I don't have to make a perfect selection. I can come in with that and then I can rough that up a little bit and it gives me that illusion of fur. Does that make sense? Again, the reason I'm saying that is because the solution isn't always this very straightforward idea. Okay, warm, cool. And again, you're gonna see it over and over again. Here's another one. Warm, cool, you see it? Okay, it's not bad, it's fine. It's got a lot of cool stuff going on, you know. At least it's got sort of a radiating sort of composition, right? Here's one from a movie I absolutely will never see. Okay, what do we got here? Warm, cool again, right? Why, do, why is everything warm, cool? Complementary colors. Huh? <laughs> 
Are they complementary colors? Yeah. Oh, you know why? You know why they do it all the time? Because it works. Yeah. It works. It looks super. Um, I think it looks exciting, right? Warm, cool. It does. The warm draws your eye to it first. Do what? It, the the warm color draws your eye to it first, and then the cool you see after. Yeah, it's just it's just so nice. Uh, that's because usually I think yeah. warm pulls forward and cool recedes, right? Yeah. Um, who thought this was a good movie is beyond me. This is a really nice Photoshop job. Does that make sense? Yeah. Look at that. It's a nice Photoshop job. Look at that. Look at all this stuff. It's fun. This guy isn't just using studio assets. It doesn't look like here. These he probably didn't get. He probably added all that stuff in. Look at this. Tiger, he's completely rimlit, backlit. You see that? Right? That's another thing, you know, you can do in here. It's pretty, it's a really well done poster. I mean, I can't. That's pretty nicely done poster. And by the way, there's a hierarchy here. First, second, third read, all that stuff, which is kind of interesting that he's bigger, but I'd argue that Will Smith isn't the first read. Or maybe he is. I feel like I go to this guy first. Yeah? Which is kind of unusual. I guess it was okay that he's the biggest. Well, it's about Aladdin, actually, so that makes sense. That's kind of interesting because th I don't know who this guy is, but this guy is obviously the big star, and he has that size relationship, but I feel like I look at the other guy first, which was probably totally intentional. Here's another one. This is based on an old Bob Peak poster for Apocalypse Now. I have a feeling, I'm curious if that's, I mean, that's total Bob Peak ripoff. That's got to be fan art or something. Here's another one, warm, cool. Montage, same idea. Now here's one. This was this is Drew Struzan, so this was hand painted, okay. But these kind of things here are, are fun things that you could use in the one you're going to do. Does that make sense? And I'll show. I'll talk about this in a sec. I think that's the ones I have. Hang on. I think that's all the ones I have. Oh, here's another one. A little bit of that, what we just used with the layer mask tool. Does that make sense? By the way, look, here's the horizon again, right? With the characters down below, big head type, blah, blah, blah. So hopefully you're seeing this formula. The only thing I like about this one actually is that they added this sort of graphic element into it. So remember that, okay? And then they contain some of it in here. It spills out over here, you know. I like that graphic element in it. You just add something else to it. Here's that lousy Dora one. Or the one I don't like anyway. I think that's all the ones I got. Yeah. Okay. Does that all make sense, you guys? I'm going to take this guy again. And if I wanted to do a few of these things, it's pretty simple. I'm going to make a layer. I already have one. I'm going to go here. And again, a lot of times I'm putting down a color that's pretty screamy, and I'm going to go to my, um, whatever you call it, gradient tool. And I'm just going to go through here and go, oops. Right there, it's starting to work already. So that is darken. But I like to run through them and see if I find anything cooler. Like that's a little stronger, which I kind of like. So I'm going to go here and maybe pull that down a hair. And maybe going back to the one we just talked about today, hue saturation, and go maybe just give it a little lighter or a little, I desaturated a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to do the warm, cool thing. I'll go up here. Now I'm going to try, I made, I made that selection earlier. Remember? Right. That's weird. Why didn't it load? Yes. It didn't load for some reason. Oh, there it is. And I'm going to invert it because I don't want the background yet. So let's go select inverse. Because I think right now I just want to have this affect him. I'm going to go up here and find a blue. 
Again, I can always adjust it. All I care about is seeing if this works. And this will probably be okay because I'm going to see how that hard edge, normally I wouldn't want that, but when I go on overlay, it might not matter. So let's see. Oops. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to matter, so it's fine. Like there, it's getting a little bit of blue. Now, it depends on how... Um, I'm gonna go back up to my hue saturation, you know, and I could saturate it more if I want, or I can desaturate. I'm gonna give it just a hair more. I'm also gonna go through this color spectrum right here. And just go, do I want it blue or something else gonna work a little better? And I think, I kind of like it with a little more purple in it, okay? Now, I can also come in here Let's go back to our selection. Actually, I'm gonna do it like this. That selection doesn't work. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do the same thing we did earlier. I'm gonna go take this. See, now I can see the edge of his cowl. Do you guys see that? Yeah? Yes. So I'm gonna take my pen tool and just real quickly do a quick little selection here. And when I'm making these selections, I'm gonna always save them. Go here, here. Select, save selection. I'll say background. And now I'm gonna go back up here. I wanna go, I'm gonna make a new layer. Then I'm gonna go, well, there's warmth or something back there. So I'm gonna try and play with this color a little bit. I'm gonna go back to my gradient tool. And again, that's too strong. So I'm gonna go Let's go. Again, I'm gonna try an overlay. I wanna get rid of the um, selection. I don't want it distracting me. That's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting. So I might go, I'm gonna try something here too, hang on. That's not it, hang on. So I had some images in here, but maybe I don't have it anymore. Wait, it should be under here. Shoot. So let's do this. Let me find, I'm gonna find, let's do this. I'm gonna find a cityscape. Actually, I think I have one. Now I could make this if I can find it, hang on. I could make this very easily. I'm just gonna use this, see if I can. I don't know if it's big enough, it's probably not. But I'm just gonna see if I can make it work. Yeah, I don't like that, hang on. Let's go. night Let's see if I can make this work Actually, I have no idea if I can it's too small hang on there it is come on 
maybe this. No, nah, that won't work. Maybe this. Let's try this. These are all too small, but I'm just going to use it anyway. And maybe let's try this. Again, I'm going to go back to my overlays again. Hang on, you guys. I'm going to do a couple things here. Oh, that's why I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. So let's try. That's kind of interesting. So now I'm going to go back up here to my saved selection. And I'm going to go inverse again. Now I'm starting to get a background. Does that make sense? Now, another thing I could do, I could just go get a rocky texture and throw it back there if I want to get it cavey. And I might go. I might take another texture because I have a lot of textures. By the way, I'm going to do two things next week before we start this project. I'm going to give you my all my fonts because you're going to need font. Um, uh, later on, I'll give you my actually maybe I'll just give you my brushes next week um, and a bunch of textures. Okay, so I could come in here now and go. I want to create. Let's see how this one works. Texture over this. I'll probably just go to multiply here. Now, there it is right there. So I got to de-rasterize this or rasterize this, sorry. And go, let's try multiply. Yeah, multiply gives a little bit of, um, let's try a different thing, a couple different things. So I can start playing with some texture in here. Now I'm going to make a layer mask right here. I'm going to take my soft brush again. Nice and big, nice and low opacity. Just knock it down. And I'm going to get rid of some of this on its face. This should be going out a little better. Oh, that's why. So I don't want it everywhere, but I do like it on the cow and I like it on the background. Does that make sense? By the way, if you have a, a camera, or well, you do, even your camera phone, especially for this project, what I used to do is I used to take my, um, my regular camera, my DSLR, and I'd have it on like a high res setting. And if I saw interesting textures, I just boom, shot them. And then I took them in, I bit mapped them or I, just reduced them to black and white. And then I just had a whole library of, of uh, textures. Does that make sense? So like here, if you look, this is actually one that came with a set that I got. I mean, these are so easy to make though. You don't need to make them, right? So these are just a bunch of different textures. These are probably scans. Like that's a pretty nice one. You know, and then I could also go back here now and go, okay, now I have this background. Again, is that the right color? And then I go, okay, so let's go to that layer. Now I can't go into my layer mask. I got to go in the actual image. And let's see if I can go. Oh, this is black and white, so I can't do it. But I should be able to, hang on. I mean, there's ways I can shift it. Is that making sense what we're doing? Yes. Um, uh, yeah, okay. it is. Um, I got a question though. Um, so background, like, you know, it's the background, but you can texturize the background as well as you can texturize his I can texture face. Anything. 
Yeah, but is it a different layer or is it put on yeah, top? The texture is on. Part of it? The texture is on this layer right here. Or wait, no. Yeah, there's the texture. Uh, it's yes, it's on its own layer, and then I just go. I went. This is soft light, so it's a soft light overlay. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Whenever you're going to okay. do yeah. an overlay, whenever you're going to do an overlay, it has to be um, on top, on its own layer, to affect whatever's underneath okay. it. Okay. Uh, now here's another but thing. Are those two like? Go ahead. Are those like melded together? Then, like you said, because you've got the texture is on the overlay, right? Yes. So you put it on top. Yes. And then if you didn't want it, like you said, oh, that doesn't work. You can just throw it away. I can just turn it off. Look. Oh, oh, okay. Or I could throw okay. it away. I never throw anything away because something mm -hmm. I think looks like crap right now, tomorrow I might think looks great. Might like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and again, whenever you're saving things, like if you're going to send something to a client, you want to go up here to save as, keep your original file. Let's, if you're sending it, let's say as an email, then I'm going to go, because I'm doing a save as, I'm going to go wherever, JPEG. And I'm going to save that. And then I'll reduce down the file size. And that's what I'll email, right? The mistake some people make early on is they go, oh, they're asking to see it. So I'm just going to collapse all the layers and send to them. Then they're going to come back and go, okay, I want the background layer this color. I want this to change. And you're like, oh, shit, I, I flattened everything. Now I can't. So just always do a save as out of it, okay? And then make sure that you're lowering your, um, you know, when you have that JPEG, go into the JPEG here. Let's do it. Let's go file, save as, save on your computer, send. Uh, yeah. Oops, wait a minute, sorry. File, save as, save on your computer, change it to whatever you want, JPEG, TIFF, whatever it is. Uh, and let's call it send go save and then what i would do is i'd come back over to it it's going to give me this i always put it all the way to the top and then i want to go over here open it back up here it is And I'm gonna go, it's right here, image, image size. And I'm gonna go, this is small, it's not that big. Oh, it's 300. So I'm gonna go 72, because I don't want to email a, seven, a 300. This is too small, but it's about that big. I wouldn't want it that small, but I'm gonna reduce it down. Nobody in their email wants to get some big giant, number one, it probably won't even send, some big giant 23 meg file or something like that. When you're just looking at them, to see where you're at or whatever you don't you know and i'd also argue that's another thing and i think this stuff's important i think that's another thing it starts to telegraph to people that you don't know what you're doing does that make sense like if i get an email from somebody and it's a big cumbersome file and all i'm really doing is just checking it and seeing how it looks and art you know giving it some art direction or whatever and they send me some big bulky file and uh there's two things that are going to happen either i get it and i go jesus this file's huge uh, or they're going to call me and go, you know, I tried to send it. And it's, it, did you get it? No. And the reason I didn't get it is because it's a hundred megabyte file. And the inbox is like, I'm not taking that. You know what I mean? And then they start creating all these problems. I don't want people creating problems. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, one more thing here. I could also start to come in here maybe with my pen tool. You know, this I have to start really, I'm going to make another little selection here. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to make this. Because if I have that hot a lighting, I'm probably going to have to come in here at some point and go, oops, I'm on the wrong layer. probably going to have to come in here and create some sort of rim light here. That's actually kind of interesting right there, but it's too much. So I'm going to desaturate it. Yeah, that's not too bad. 
And see, it's starting to get a little more lit there where I'm starting to speak to the environment again. Okay, and that's just a simple shape, right? I might do it in here. One thing I like to do is go, okay, I've got this pocket in here that is this cheekbone. Let's try it this way. I'm gonna try going, I'm gonna make this selection. And then, well, let's just, I'll do it. Sometimes I'll go in with a rougher brush, depending on what, what it is. But I'm just gonna go back to a, um, because I'm kind of trying to build up the lighting here. Wrong layer. And what the overlays are letting me do is sort of literally have them blend into that, that layer below, right? And sometimes this doesn't work and I have to come up with a different solution. So I'm gonna So go. like if you're working on his face, would you, let's say you wanted to do his eyes, maybe a little touch on his forehead, yeah. his cheeks. Would you do them as each individual overlays? Uh, I might do the eyes. Like if it's something that can marry together, I might just um, do it, um, you know, on the same layer. It just depends on what I'm doing. Like if it's okay. both the eyes are probably gonna get an under reflection, which I'll do here in a second. Um, let's say that's a little, now I might come in here I still think that's a little too much. I might come in here. Now here's something that I was gonna talk about next week, but I mean, it's very simple. If you go up under here under filter, right here under blur, then you go Gaussian blur, that's just your standard one. We'll talk about them more next week. And you can see it'll soften that up a little bit. I've got preview clicked right here. If you don't have preview, you're not gonna see it. Does that make sense? Yeah? And I'm just, what I'm doing is it was too harsh. So I'm pulling it back a little bit. Does that make sense? And what I want to do is, because there's all this blue in here, I, I kind of like getting a little bit of the light, some of that warmth bouncing into that cool areas a little bit, right? Because this, this um, it's up to me what this lighting environment is. Does that make sense? It's a, it's a fantastic environment. So I'm, I'm deciding what I want it to be. Does that make sense? I could have a blue light out here or you know up here like I put it and that's fine. I'm thinking now it feels a little, and then I, I feel like this in here needs a couple of hot spots. I might come in here again and say, this is all getting bounced from below. So to me, it's like anything that's a down facing plane probably is gonna pick up some warmth, like his brow even might, right? Because it's a down-facing plane. Your upper lip's a down-facing plane. Right. Under okay. your neck is a down-facing plane, so on and so forth, right? So that's a very simple way to look at it, right? If I have this strong a light source coming upwards, it's going to start... You've seen people pictures with people when they have a flashlight under their face and how the lighting reverses. Like everything that you normally see lit is reversed, right? Because it's, it's hitting all the opposite planes, right? Another one... Let's do this real quick. So I'm gonna pop a little in here too. Oops, I need a new layer. And yes, I'm putting this all in new layers because I wanna control each layer. I'm gonna put this from the top down because I don't want a hard edge. And then again, I wanna see where I end up. And this could be really subtle. So if I'm starting to understand that like what really separates the quality of work is like the process of you know, 50% was just the two gradients, but all this fine tuning, this tweaking is really what kicks it up. I'd say what really kicks it up is knowing. So if you notice, all I got was this little rim light on the edge of his cowl. I like that. It's subtle. Okay. But it's still speaking to this lights bouncing, right? I'd say what, it, what, what I'm doing here, and it's what we've kind of started talking about. Uh, you asked it. I'm thinking big to small. I'm trying to get this lit. Does that make sense? in a big way. So I'm going where, okay, what's my light source? Boom, that's it, right? What's it gonna hit? Okay, now I'm gonna hit that. Okay, is the light gonna bounce into shadows? Probably, and I'll try it. If it doesn't work, I don't use it. Sometimes I land on a color, which is why I go through the color spectrum. 
where I'll be going through the color spectrum and it'll, I don't know, there's a green thrown in and I go, holy crap, that looks cool. You know what I mean? Now I still in my brain go, why is that happening? I still think about it a little bit. I want to make sure. And then I, you know, I want to have a little distance from it because I might go back and look at it tomorrow and go, Ooh, that doesn't make any sense. Look cool at the moment. You know what I mean? Which by the way, whenever you start a job, start it right away. Because the reason you want to do that is you want to have the time to actually be able to sit back away from it and have a look at it. Okay. So now we have all that. Um, I, again, I'd probably come in here now and maybe put another little layer right here. And I'm going to take this and do the same thing. Oops. Make the selection. And then I'm going to take my gradient. Make sure it's on the right layer. Then I'm just going to take the same one, click it, and then hold Option. And see how I get two arrows? By the way, this is universal in a lot of programs. I'm going to go two arrows, and then that just means it's going to duplicate itself. Oops, it's on the, it's on the wrong layer. Hang on. So now this is on its own layer. Now here's one where I'm just gonna go option, drag it over. And then I'm gonna go, here's the two layers. I don't think I need two layers for this. So I'm gonna select both of these, go to my flyout menu like we talked about yesterday and go merge layers. And then I'm gonna go, I think it's color, hang on. Where'd it go? It's at the bottom for color. Oh. Second okay. to the bottom. Yeah. I've only been using this for like 25 years. You think I'd know that by now? Okay. And we get a little bit of reflected light in his eyes, right? His dreamy eyes. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And now, okay. So let's say I go, all right, I'm starting to get, I think in here now, down facing plane. Another one, I'm going to take this. So what I'm trying to do, this is showing up too much right here. So I'd have to come in here. I don't think I need a layer mask for this in particular. I think I can just use an eraser. I'm not going to pull that back up. And I'm also going to come in here. That feels too saturated to me. So I'd probably come in and play around with that a little bit. Um, and by the way, and in here, wait, what's that? I could also just come in here with my sponge tool that we talked about a while ago, which you probably forgot about, and put it on desaturate and come in here and desaturate that little section a little bit. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. By the way, I'm clicking my layer like I told you guys to pick it, but there's an overlay. So it's picking that overlay layer, right? So I got to go find this layer. It is, I think it's here. Yeah, there it is. So I'm gonna to go to this layer and I'm gonna take my desaturate tool. Yeah, I'm gonna desaturate that a little. That's a little better. I don't know what that shape right there is. Let's see. That's weird, I don't know what that is. There's a shape there I gotta get rid of and I don't know where it is. That looks like the texture. Yeah, it might be. So I might have to go in with a layer mask Maybe it is, let's see. No, it isn't. Oh, never mind. Stop for a second. See what it is. That's weird. Man, no matter what I pick, it doesn't pick it. Oh, that's why. See, I've got all these overlays over it, so it's picking the overlays. Jeez. I don't know where it is, but I'd have to get rid of that. Does that make sense? I don't know where I put that at, but it's in there. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, here. I think I put a new layer here. I'm going to make a new one just in case. I'm going to take my pen tool again. So I'm just trying to get some basic lighting going on here.
I'm not even sure if this will work. I'll see. Back to my pen tool. And some more red light. Now, you can see it's way too sharp edged, which is fine for now. I just want to see if it works. So I don't want to spend a bunch of time on it if it's not going to work. And I don't know if that's going to. Maybe if I pull it, I'm going to blur this, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So now it's really subtle. It's just warmed up a little. So there's a light source at the bottom is it's moving up away from the light source. It's getting less intense. Does that make sense? And again, I know this isn't a, whatever, an illustration class or whatever, but if you don't use these tools right, they're just ugly, okay? If you don't think about what you're doing, I don't expect everybody to know everything about lighting or anything like that, but I'm just using this to show you like, here's a bunch of things we've talked about and we can get a pretty cool image going. Does that make sense? Let's see, what else? Is there anything else I can do here? Well, let's do this. I'm gonna drag this and make a copy of all this. Just go E, and then I'm gonna turn all these off. And then I wanna do our little trick again. We go to brushes. I never can remember which one I used. I don't like that one. Nope, I don't like that one. By the way, it's low opacity. I don't want it low opacity right now. Maybe it's this one. Okay, this is pretty good. Now I'm going to do one other thing here. Hang on. I'm going to erase this out a little bit here because I want to kind of go I want to leave a little bit of texture in there. And then I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to take this brush, which is a really weird brush. And I just want to change up a few of the edges so they're not all the same. But underneath, Option, click, and now I can, and by the way, I can still go in here now and go, okay, that's a little too much. Let's put uh, something behind it. Oops, something behind it here. Oops, it's reading all this through the, um, through the mask, which I actually don't want. I'm gonna take my brush again and I can still go in here and start painting into this a little bit. So it's not completely unreadable. I'm gonna go back to my other brush a little bit. So I'm just gonna paint in enough that I like. And I go, okay, what? Again, here's my color spectrum. I could leave it red, actually. You know, and I could play around here, or I could just go, eh, maybe it's white. And then maybe I'm going to crop it, pull it down here. Fill this again. Go to my type tool right here. 
Cool, it's got already got some type in it. I'm going to change it to uh, actually, that's fine. Let's do this. I'm going to go, I'm going to take this shape, I'm going to pull it up here. I'm going to remember I said you can click the thumbnail image on your layer and it selects whatever's on that layer. I can do the same thing with the type command click and see how it gave me a um, whatever you call that. Right. And then I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to sort of I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to use that selection. I'm gonna, I turned it off. I'm going to go command C command V. Take the same part of the image and create a little more, uh, whatever you call it, right? Okay, so you can see how we can put all those tools together. We're using overlays, <clears throat> selections, um, gradient, uh, clipping mask, and probably at some point I'd be using a, a layer mask in here probably, right? Because sometimes I'm not gonna use my, <clears throat> like I might just go in here now and go, okay, I got this going. I think I want to go in here with a, a brush and I have to find the overlay here. That's too, it's not soft enough. Yeah, let's try a different brush. And I might start to come in here and sort of like under his nose, I'd probably want a little bit of a highlight. And again, now I might start doing a little bit of freehanding here. And also, now I gotta find an overlay that works. That's not too bad. That's kind of cool. Let's try that for a little bit. And then again, I might come in here and go, You know, like if I, I think this is too much, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower, I'm gonna get my eraser, really lower the opacity, you know, and sort of knock some of this back. I don't want to be too screaming. And I can start to come in here. I might get some highlights in here where there's a little bit in like here, some edge right there that might get a little bit of a highlight. Again, I'm probably gonna come back in and knock it down a little bit because it's too much, you know. And then I'd start, now, I, now I'm in the second phase of it. I've got the big idea there. <clears throat> um, and now I'm just gonna, and this is where I fall down the rabbit hole. Then I just start going, oh, I should do this. And I could put this there. Maybe like on the top of his cowl, maybe I'll put, you know, maybe in the original image, I would have done it. Maybe I go, he's got a cowl here. Why can't I say that that's casting a shadow over the top part of his face? And now I'm gonna do that shadow thing we talked about yesterday with the lion, where I'm gonna go fill this with a gray, like a mid value gray, cause I can always adjust it. And I'm gonna go, let's try it this way. Now I'm going to go to multiply. And then I'm going to have to soften it back to my filter, blur, Gaussian blur. All I got to do is dial this in. There, right there. And then I can go, I need the cowl for that to work though, by the way. And then I go to my layer, my levels that we just talked about. And maybe dial it in. Does that make sense? Or I might go to a color. I might go, that's not enough color. Or I might go, that's too much. And I'm going to pull it back a little. And then maybe, <clears throat> oops, and maybe put a layer mask on it. Very low opacity brush. And this is a rough brush. I kind of like that. Okay. <clears throat> and I just keep going down the rabbit hole. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, 
again, I'm giving you a heads up on this because I want you to start thinking about it. When I like you guys to think about your project, hopefully get excited about what you want to do, but I like to give you a lot of think time. Does that make sense? Because we're going to do a camera. We're going to do this color, this correction thing starting Monday. We'll burn through that. Then we're doing this. Does that make sense? Questions? Uh, clipping mask, layer mask, and then just go check out hue saturation, levels, and uh, uh, brightness contrast. Yeah? Uh, on Monday, I just want to see that you guys understood those those it's what five tools uh, yeah and then we talked a little bit about the blur tool okay which is under filter blur gaussian blur okay and there's different types of blurs in there and everything if you want to play with them <coughs> for the most part a lot of the filters are slider driven Just so for the done. homework mike huh? we're gonna we're gonna um experiment with the Clipping mask, layer mask, and then the three sliders, which was the brightness, contrast, hue, saturation. Yeah, and I'll put, I'll write all those in the assignment. Oh, okay, cool. And Thank I'll you. write where they live. From now okay. on, I'll try and put it in the assignment, not in the announcements. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I will try and do that all the time. And again, I will try and put the timestamp of when the actual conversation starts on new material. Yeah, I mean, that's easy for me to do. Yeah, and then um, did you also want us to play with a typeface, or we're just going to save that for the movie poster next week? Yeah, I mean you can, you can. And all you do is you click, and it gives you a typeface, right? Okay. <clears throat> and then if you here's another trick with the typeface: if you make a typeface, so I just picked it. It's going to pick your foreground color, right? So let's go there. There's Lipsamorum. So you're probably learning that it's always going to be. Oh, and the content fill, content aware fill, we want to do. None of these things are going to take you very long. So you have this, right? <clears throat> you can go like this and click it and it'll select it. Sometimes for some reason, it'll give you a little bit of problem. You can also go right here to your T, your little T image and double click it and it'll select your type. Okay. Other than that, you know, you're just selecting type like you would in a word processor and just changing it. Okay. And then if I want to make this a selection, then I, Again, just like we do with everything else, I put it right over my little thumbnail, command click, and it'll make it a selection, okay? <clears throat> but there's certain things with live type <clears throat> that um, Photoshop will not let you do, okay? So sometimes you have to go, it's just like we talked about earlier when I said rasterize that smart object. <clears throat> and you could do it from here or you could do it up here type. I think it's under here. Actually, it's right here. It's under layer rasterize type right um you know now it's not active type anymore it's a uh, it's just a shape right but sometimes you have to do that to be able to do certain things with it <clears throat> like i don't know if the warp tool works on type when it's live type there's just certain things it doesn't want to do does that make sense so i'm trying to tell you guys that because <clears throat> before you have it happen to you okay and you don't have to go very far down the rabbit hole with this stuff because I, I kind of want you to save that for your poster, but I do want you to um, make sure, you know, if you want to play a little bit, I, I encourage that. Okay. And the other thing I'd start, and then again, we have to go through our um, photo correction process and then we'll start the poster process. Does that make sense? What I would start to do that I ask people to do is just give me a quick little thumbnail when we get to it. Not now, right? And I, when I say thumbnail, by the way, they can be insanely simple, okay? Because I get people sometimes they go, oh, I'm, not a, I'm a graphic designer, I don't draw. It's, it doesn't, it could be a big oval and you go, I'm going to have a big hero head here. This little box down here means this. This is the horizon line. Da, da, that's all, okay? I just want to, and, you know, and always be thinking about where your type's going to be because I want type in it, okay? Um, and again, I don't care if it's a movie poster. I don't care. I just sort of want that format, Okay. Could be a book cover, could be a movie poster, could be an event poster. I don't care. I just want it to have uh, elements to, to do something cool. Does that make sense? That's it. Um, questions? Okay, I will. Uh, I have a meeting. I'll try and get as much done as I can before that. But we have some time because we have the weekend. Um, I'll, get the, I'll get this up as fast as I can. Go ahead. Is this due tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning or Monday morning? Oh, no, Monday. Okay.
I'm never going to give you anything that's due when we're not in class. Okay. okay. And also usually when we have a crit, <clears throat> like we're finishing anything, I'm not, when I, I'm not going to really crit. If you notice, like if we do mechanics things, I'm not really critting them. I'm discussing them and I'm just trying to help you find problems or, you know, Hey, you could do it like this and, you know, just give you constructive feedback. That's all I'm doing. Um, when we like finish, do a finished, like a poster idea, then we'll kind of look at them and go, okay, this could work a little bit if we did that. And it's a little more of a crit. Does that make sense? But I consider these day-to-day -day things discussions, okay? Where I want to know what you're having problems with. I, I'll give you some ideas, maybe how to make it better or whatever. Does that make sense? By the way, I could take this guy, you know, and saturate him up a little bit. Could even slide this and see if I like a different color combination, which I don't. Or I might go, the ones we we're talking about today, I might go, let's see, brightness contrast. Darken up those shadows a little bit. And then my levels are always here where I might go Maybe I want to bring in the mid tones a little more. Maybe I want to pull the darks a little darker. Maybe lighten up the lights a little bit. I don't like that. It sounds dramatic. So on and so forth. Does that make sense? So we got a handful of big broad tools and we can do quite a bit of stuff with it. Okay. By the way, another thing I could do, I know I keep going on. Um, I could like before I, I created this mask, Taking my tool, I'm just going to grab a color. I'm not going to worry about it. Taking my um, gradient. And started creating sort of search lighty kind of ideas back here. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yes. Yes, it does. I'm going to desaturate it a little bit, maybe lighten it. I might come in here with my filter, go back to Gaussian blur again, give it a little bit of a, I don't want it too hard edged. Like maybe there, put a little point source of light down here. Oops. Why am I not getting my light? Oh, I got the opacity too low. You know, so there's some point source down there of light and blah, 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 right? Or I could have a helicopter up here and it's thrown down a searchlight, you know, whatever, right? And it's just a gradient, okay? So we use a lot of gradients in here, obviously, yeah? And again, that's sort of my underpainting, all that gradient-y stuff. And then I might go in with like a rougher brush and start painting in light like I was showing, right? So this is basically trying to build up my underpainting and my idea and sort of working everything out and making sure that it makes sense. And then I can add all that other stuff into it, right? Like helicopters would be later, not right off the bat probably, because I'm not going to think of it right off the bat. That makes sense? Yes. Okay, you guys. Um, so yes, Monday, yes. I will put up the assignment. I will put all that information up and I'll put this video up as quick as I can get it up. Yeah. Great. Thank That's you. Great. Okay, thank, you. thank you. I'm Audi. Professor Wake, can I talk right. to you for a couple minutes? Sure. Who Thanks a lot. See you guys. Who Bye. was it? Who was talking to me? That was uh, me, Anthony.